So this is, of all the clinics that we've done in Monaro, this is one that I've been the least directly involved in. I was invited for this whirlwind tour of Asia about three weeks ago, and we spent these um, two weeks just visiting lots of different members and OEMs and OEMs and talking to them about Linux and open source on ARM and what Lenaro is doing about it. And I, I've been in Lenaro from the beginning. Actually, you know, um, Stephen, um, David, myself, Luik, were uh, Matt actually was employee number one. This, this is like the, the group of people that saw it, it coming across from the beginning. And I don't know if you guys have the same impression as I do, but in the beginning, we would go out and visit members and potential members and people that were doing things with open source on ARM. And I would feel that our story was soup, was paper thin. You know, we would go there, we'd have a lot of good intentions and, and great plans, but the reality is that well, we hadn't done anything and it was just a concept, you know. Putting together a distributed company, um, including engineers from all the different members and having those work together on these projects that we thought were important for improving time to market and improving competitiveness of ARM, but we, we didn't really know if that was going to work. And um, I just feel this amazing change just going and seeing them. <coughs> Um, this last, these last two weeks in seeing that every question they had, we had good answers to, we had done research on, we had looked at different implementation strategies and were able to advise what they should be doing. So I'd just like to start off by celebrating what we've achieved over this last year. I think that we have built this, uh, an amazing organization which nobody has ever done before. And I think we haven't felt the, the ripple impact of these deliveries that we've done, but we certainly will see those impacts over the coming year. Um, we have put together things which I'm really proud to talk about. The best performing tool chain on ARM by far, with open source, immediate access to anybody, um, benchmarks that are continuously run, a team of people that really cares about it, will reply to bugs which, if you file them, will give you performance anecdotes to compare against. So I think that's one thing which I'm really proud of talking about when I go and talk to members and, and potential members, one thing which I, I, I'm really proud of talking about. Um, addressing the ARM um, upstreaming and ARM complexity issues in the upstream kernel, of course, we haven't solved this problem, but we've made an amazing impact on that. And even though our name isn't widely waved on the flag of solving that, I think that we, we were key in, in solving that problem there, and, and David and Arne have put real effort in, in bringing together the people that needed to make their opinions felt. And I think, again, this is something we've just seen the beginning of, and we will see this flesh out into a much more mature group and a, and a much more um, amplified effect that we'll have on the kernel itself in terms of ARM. But I, I, I see the beginnings of something which is really wonderful and fantastic there. I think that we're, we're going really in the right direction. Um, all the other working groups have individually you know, put together things. Ubuntu builds developer images that anybody can use. An Android build, which we can use internally to test whether the work that we're doing is relevant and makes Android better. But also just you know, widening out this, this idea that Android is important. And even people that, are, that don't, are not directly interested in Android or not directly interested in the link between Android and open source are sort of forced to see that Android is there and it's important that we should consider it as a target for when we're doing development. It's something which I also want to thank George for just highlighting when he came in. He said, remember that Android is the most volume that all these members are shipping today. We definitely have to do something special about it because it should factor into our plans. And so I'm very, very satisfied to see that evolution there. And um, I can pull out like a dozens of examples which I give to the members when I go there. Um, LibJPEG Turbo, just identifying that and showing what the performance optimizations are. And when I go and talk to people about this, they say, wow, this is, this is really good stuff. I should be using that in my product. Why are we not using it? And so I see the managers asking their engineers in these meetings, why are you not using the stuff that these guys are producing? It's all freely available. And so I really want us to, to celebrate and just recognize this achievement, this hallmark achievement that we've done over this last year and a half, which is putting together this team and producing things with a lot of value. So this week, I don't want to go into a lot, of, a lot of detail about what I want you to achieve. I have some things that I want to achieve myself and I want to make happen there, so the things that I feel that I haven't helped drive forward enough. Um, but I want, I trust you and I trust your tech leads to decide what the most important things to solve during this week are. We've put a lot of effort, I've, I've put you know, hours and hours into just specifying this, and we've put a lot of effort collectively into putting together this thing about a roadmap process, about giving us a long-term vision of what Lenaro is supposed to achieve. Now, I trust you to have read those and to do the right thing, to do what we mean when you look at those roadmap requirements. The process still has to be fleshed out a little bit. We're not 100% sure about the timing of it, and we need to deliver those things in a, more, in a clearer, more you know, professional way. But I trust you to do what I mean. When you look at the, the list of requirements which are, which are there, some of which will not be scheduled yet, some of which will not be yet fully fleshed out, you will understand 
this is this is something which we should be able to do immediately. This is something we, we can take a little bit more time there. And of course, come and ask us if you're not sure about it. But I want to just transmit this that over this last year and a half, I've really learned to trust your decisions and saying this team of people here, which are experts in that in that area there, know what they're doing. The kernel engineers, they know what they're doing. The kernel, they understand what the long term vision is. And so I, I really trust you guys to go out and make the most out of that out of the week there. And I both trust you to come out of this session here and in your first uh, hacking session get together, just talk about what it is that you want to get out of the week. And if you have special challenges that you want to present to your team, then as soon as I'm finished here, you should talk about that. Finally, ARM is going to change a lot over the last five years. And I think, so over the next five years, I think <laughs> when we started out, we were doing a lot of catch-up. A lot of the things that members when we were in the foundation meetings, when they, they brought to us, were things that simply just broken on ARM, just didn't work on ARM at all. And I think up to now, we've been doing a lot of catch-up. And for the kernel in particular and consolidation, I think that we'll still see a lot of catch-up there. But as we get closer to the point where we're happy with where we are, we need to start thinking about bringing support in for the future. And I think it's very easy for us to just focus on what our members have implemented in terms of software and delivery today, and using the existing DSPs and the existing products that are shipping today as a guideline. But that's a little bit tricky because as you get closer to completing that goal, you could end up with this feeling of satisfaction, whereas in fact, we have a lot of work to prepare for the future there. Um, one of the things which I'm seeing a lot of questions around when I go and talk to the, to the members is around SMP asymmetric multiprocessing and what the future for us will look like there. And I think that we've barely started scratching the surface of that. Yeah, I see this um, a conversation around in power management in particular, around SCEDMC and multi-core scheduling. But I think multi-core, and in particular, asymmetric multi-core, will really change the way that we think about computing, will change the way how we think about scalability or enablement. So these are things that I, I really want us to be thinking about. Because when I go and, I, and when they go and they ask me today, what is Lenara doing about big, little, multi-core, I don't feel like I have really good answers there. And I think it's okay for them to be thin at the moment, but I want us to be thinking about those because a year from now, that will be all they're asking us about. They won't ask about anything which has been in, in existing years. They'll be asking us about what happens for the future there. Um, and now that we have a V8 announcement, also thinking about what V8 means for us um, going forward. People that are working in the platform, I think in particular, have to think about this transition. Can we avoid repeating errors that we've made on Intel and do it, the, do it right for the first time in ARM? Uh, you'll see that, in, what, sorry. We'll see that um, for, for Intel, they're discussing a new ABI, which is x86. I think it's, a, it's an interesting, X32, I think is the name, actually. And I think it's, it's an interesting um, perspective to, to put, wow, we've had 64-bit for such a long time, and now they're thinking they're talking about, wow, could we make an ABI which is a bit more efficient today? And we could take advantage of that learning and, and, and really cut the development time on ARM very short. So as I said, keep the future in mind. ARM is here to stay. Um, ARM believes that open source is the platform which is going to be delivered to most of the users, if not all the users in the company in the future. And we know that open source has outlived all the other competitors that have shown up in the meantime. So Linux, and I'm, I'm sure, pretty sure that Linux will outlive all the operating systems which are out there today. So ARM has really invested very heavily in open source. Linaro is the materialization of part of that investment there and putting together this, this team of companies. Seeing this team of companies work together effectively, I think, is amazing. If you look around, you know, the, the companies that are represented here, I've never seen these companies communicate and, and, and collaborate um, in an open manner as they, as they are today here in this group. And I think that's, that's a fantastic achievement. So before I wrap up, I just wanted to ask, um, and is there a microphone if, if I can go around, if any of the tech leads want to give any special challenges to their teams during the week, any, anything, any things which they like to like, throw the gauntlet down and say, I, I dare my team to achieve that. Is there a microphone that we can give out? Steven? Cool. Anybody? Jesse? <laughs> yeah. I, I don't need a microphone. That's fine. <laughs> so based on a, section, a session that we actually already had uh, earlier this morning, um, I'd, I'd really like to see uh, the, there's, a, a, there's work going on between my group and Paul's group to get uh, some of the some of, uh, graphics uh, sort of hardware pack profiling data up in a, in a nice dashboard and a good visualization uh, for everybody to really be able to see how the progress on the hardware packs is, is made and for us to be able to track all that and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, 
Uh, I think we had a really great, uh, really great session on that, and, and I actually think we, we could actually see um, the skeleton of a lava extension to support that by the end of this week. So I, I, I would like to maybe put down the, the challenge a little bit to, to my group and to Paul's group to try to make that happen. Give, give Roger a heart attack by Friday. I think it's <laughs> <laughs> Good job. Talk about sure. Okay, so uh, from a multimedia point of view, I'll, I'll join this train and say that we also would like to do something related to benchmarking with uh, different codecs. We, we, we are... Sorry? That wasn't me. Yes, right. <laughs> <laughs> there may be some echo or something. Anyway, the, the point there is that we, we are already doing a lot of benchmarking, but uh, we would like to consolidate that and provide it through a, a dashboard through Lava and uh, make it available to everybody to see and, and uh, extend. And also, is this an outgrowth of the Smart TT? Uh, well, uh, we will look at Smart TT as well, but uh, it might might be that we don't use that Smart TT in the end. And um, also, we, we uh, had a session early in the morning, and um, uh, I think that it would be a good challenge to try and get uh, this uh, UCM for Android uh, somehow started and uh, in a good track. All right. So for the, for the development platform, I think um, one of the good things that we all together here is kind of nail down the bugs with the landing teams, kind of getting together with each landing teams and go through the bug list and try to fix most of those, at least kind of know what is the current status and then report and update those, try to reduce. I'm, uh, I'm planning to try to reduce at least kind of uh, and a half of the bugs that we have now because we have quite a long list. So really, really dig up uh, uh, and try to find out the, the, the landing teams engineers and try to sit down at the table. We have every, everything available and try to sort all the bugs. And uh, another, on another front, um, one of the, the challenges is to finally be, uh, be able to cross compile a, a package using Mutiarch. We have most of the engineers here that knows about Mutiarch, knows about the current, the, the current issues and, and maintains a cross compiler packages. So finally get it done and uh, or at least get it in a good shape that we can know what are the, the following issues. For the first half of that, which is like fixing, fixing most, a lot of the bugs which are affected by landing teams, yeah. is, is like one outcome there, should be quiet. There's one of the outcomes there that we would get to a more greener board yes. support yes. report. And then also, you know, make our make our members happier when we when we publish that. Yep. At the moment, I see a lot of red there, and I, I feel that's good. That that's we should be seeing the problems because we know that there are problems. But I want to know if we're going to be fixing them as well. Yep. That's yeah. That's good. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Let me go before anybody else puts any more requirements on that. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, some people misunderstood Kiko and said, you know. There, there should be requirements for validation. You know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, so we've we've seen a lot of growth in Lava over the past few months, and, and I anticipate there's going to be a lot more growth over the coming months. Um, you know, we've gone very rapidly to to about uh, I think plus 30 boards or so from where we were three months ago, and I, I think over the next three to six months we could be easily in the triple digits by then. So I would like to see a lot of work being done on area of scalability and rapid deployment of Lava so that we can push out some of the changes that we're doing um, quicker and, and in a way that's much more stable and, and predictable. So uh, one of the things that I'm hoping we can achieve this week is a uh, more flexible deployment strategy um, that will help us get there. So uh, for the infrastructure, uh, the one thing that I want to see like long term is to actually get a little bit more consolidation in all the things that we are doing, but for this specific week, I'm hoping that the infrastructure team can actually go and visit all the sessions and working groups that are here and actually watch them work with the tools that we are developing and uh, basically see where you're heading and how you're doing that and uh, that will tell us basically what we need to do next. But that's roughly it. Yeah. 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 Hi, well, I'm Daniel. <laughs> I just started a week ago as the infrastructure tech lead, so if you have any issues, come talk to me. We also have a stakeholder session uh, tomorrow at noon, so check the schedule, and if you have any issues uh, being your tech lead, or come along yourself, uh, and uh, we can talk about the things that you need uh, that you'll find us. There's also like the whole infrastructure team here, except Deep Team, uh, so you can find any of them as well and talk to them. And as I said, I encourage all of them. Thank you.
guys and see how you guys operate. That's it. I, I think the phrase with this team every time that we're together now, and I think this is team that really makes a difference for Lenar, having a team of people that can use and maintain tools that everybody here can use is a big difference for Lenar. So do take advantage, advantage of the time. Go and talk to Lenar, to Daniel, and ask him, you know, can we get this done, can we fix this? I'm having this problem in this area here, or I need a tool to solve this problem. Let's, let's get those requirements out. I think it's really important that it really changes the way that we, we develop work to have a team of infrastructure people that's working so close to us. So uh, I don't see a bit here, but uh yeah, yeah. No, sure. I was gonna talk about start clocking you guys that's a bit. Uh, all right. basically Mike will be working with a couple of guys in the kernel team on struct clock across all the platforms we support. So I think it will be awesome if we have patches by the end of the week uh, upstream. At least initial patches. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure, Mike. No pressure. Um, and then uh, the rest of the team, we're going to be working on continuing device tree support and also the single Z image. So hopefully we'll see a bunch of patches for that. I'll post it upstream at the end of the week also. So Steve, you And besides that, we're trying to uh, solve the CPU idle problem, which is uh, none of the uh, members have uh, drivers in the inline, and so we're going to try to uh, uh, do a common uh, driver uh, for CPU idle. Uh, Rob's working on that, and uh, get at least some of that code uh, by the end of the week, um, along with uh, maybe one other platform. I don't want to name, name anyone yet, but uh, one other platform. So the effect of CPU I don't really missing is that basically we don't use any IO space at all in Yeah, basically in everything gets uh, any any uh, improvements we make because of SCAD MC or C groups just gets lost in the noise. We don't hit any powers, say these days. So uh, and none of uh, our members have the drivers in mainline. We need to fix that. Anybody else want to set any challenges out up for an hour for this week? I just want to say one thing. So, if you think of the company as, as a team here, think about the individual accomplishments that you want to make for the week. I think it's an amazing company that you, got to, you just don't take things for granted. I mean, you've got the executive team that's here that's very open for you to come up and talk to them. That's, that, that, does, that doesn't exist in every single company. They flew everybody in to Orlando, you know, the center of tourism and everything here, and, and it was rough flights, but think about what you did. Think about what you did, so you, you all came together, everybody has unique different teams, but think about it from an individual standpoint too, that, you know, what you're trying to achieve with the company and what you, how you're trying to grow, and I think it's quite amazing, I just wanted everybody to just take that appreciation in. All right, thanks very much, guys. Thank you.